To define an eccentric person, basically it's someone you can't categorise or pigeonhole. They tend to be very much individuals in their own right, creative, artistic, musical, but just doing something different and don't want to be identified with the masses, and that can be covertly or overtly. Someone walking down the street wearing a silly hat and costume um, might think they're eccentric and people look at them and, and laugh, but that's not what, um, that's not how I consider eccentrics to be. I saw the sheep sitting outside a junk shop in Bourne End, thought, have to have that, and um, again, trying to do something that no one else has done, I thought we'll have a short Cider cheap, climbing up a tree. <laughs> My particular brand of eccentricity um, is to do with mechanical creations inspired by people like Heath Robinson and, and Emmett. And, um, you know, although uh, Heath Robinson only illustrated things, there's some wonderful, wonderful ideas that are, are worthy of inspiration of another type of mechanism or adapting something like a, a bath chair for uh, more unusual sort of usage. Um, so yes, my eccentricity is more the interaction between me and my mechanical creations I, I make. And in fact, I call myself a mechanical foliologist rather than um, some people say inventor or eccentric. When I was a kid at school, Henry Kremer, an American um, industrialist, announced a competition for the first man-powered flight in a half-mile figure eight. I thought, well, this is a great idea. So I started building a pedal-driven gyrocopter, and um, it looked good on paper, and I built a little scale model, and that looked good. And then I constructed the main sort of heart of it, the pedal-driven rotor things. And the moment I fired that up, everything sort of fell to pieces and the vibration and weight and balance was all out. So it started sort of way back there. And I had all these ideas, but never had, I was never home long enough to make a proper workshop and, and collect the things I could later build on. So it was only in the mid-90s when I packed up the serious overseas work, I thought, right, I'm going to build a workshop, going to start catching up with all these ideas I had. So... That was it in a nutshell, really. <laughs> So I've got this nine-piece orchestra made out of copper tubing, old pram wheels, car, windscreen wiper motors, a um, couple of aircraft bits. Um, and this sort of came together and performed at the Henley Festival uh, on three different occasions. I'll see something and that triggers an inspiration, but more often than not, I'll go to something like a boot fair, a junk shop, and I'll see something, I think, oh, that could be one of those, or that could be one of those. And more recently, you know, I've purchased a couple of aircraft long-range fuel tanks that fit under the wing of a Hawker Hunter, and that's going to be the basis of my next river machine. <coughs> Well, I'd already made the Edwardian tricycle on the river and needed to go one stage further and something that mechanically propelled. Just happened to be looking through a Heath Robinson book and saw uh, an old lady in the bath chair. I thought, right, we'll, we'll make an amphibious bath chair. <laughs> Passing boats uh, feel sorry for me and they say, would you like a drink? So it's very difficult to reach across between here and another boat. So we've got this device that we just wind out like that and they'll give me a drink and I'll wind it back in, knock it back and then send the empty glass back again or even a bottle sometimes. I'd quite like to see some sort of eccentric museum. I haven't thought it through fully yet, but I'd like all my stuff to stay together as a collection and um, as soon as I'm not fit enough to be out performing on anymore, I'd like to give the whole lot to a museum. This is a nice mechanical piece, no electrics, no electronics, 
uh, something that just won't come about again. And it, again, it's something that um, uh, not many members of the public would, would have as a sort of private possession. So uh, due to its rarity, I have to have one. <laughs> So I think we are losing um, the eccentric type of, of people. Um, the world is becoming a smaller place. People, you know, thanks to the internet and computer, are becoming more so unified in, in interests and activities. And there seems to be very little room these days for anyone to break out and be a little bit different. I mean, there'll always be exceptions, but it's certainly a far cry from even 25, 30, 40 years ago, um, when you know, there were a lot of eccentric people around, had the license to do things without too much regulation, health and hindrance regulations and EU regulations, which is, is definitely preventing a lot of these things that are happening now.